Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, TikTok Commerce 2022, Strategies for Success. I'm Jeremy Goldman, Director of the Marketing and Commerce Briefings at Insider Intelligence, coming to you live from our New York City headquarters, and I'll be your host and moderator for this presentation. Today, I'm joined by my colleague, Principal Analyst Jasmine Enberg, coming to you from sunny California. Hey, Jasmine. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, everybody. Before we kick things off, just a few quick housekeeping notes. If your colleagues haven't registered yet, no problem. Just share the link you use to register and they can join us too. And of course, before we dive in, rest assured, you don't need to take notes. You'll receive a link to view the slides and a full recording of today's panel presentation afterwards. And we also want you to participate. Use the questions tab below at any time for the Q&A later on. We'll also address many of the questions sent in ahead of time during the presentation, during the Q&A. And if you didn't get a chance to send questions ahead of today, don't worry, we've got you, okay? We're gonna leave plenty of time at the end to cover more questions, so keep them coming. So let's get started. Jasmine, first off, I have to admit, I'm you know a big book talk guy and I just got a great recommendation um, from TikTok. Has TikTok ever made you buy it? I love that question. And Jeremy, I will say not personally yet, the yet being really important because I am a huge online shopper. So it's only a matter of time before TikTok does make me buy it. But I have had many younger family members reach out to me recently and ask me to buy them things as gifts that they've seen on TikTok videos. And as we'll find out during the presentation, that's actually a lot more common than you might think. But that is a perfect segue into our main presentation for today, which is, of course, on TikTok commerce and strategies for success. I wanted to kick things off by talking a little bit more about this hashtag TikTok made me buy it phenomenon. As of today, videos with that hashtag have about 10 billion views worldwide, and that number is still climbing. So to put that into perspective, we are expecting TikTok to have about 755 million monthly users worldwide this year. So that's as if every single one of those users watched videos with that hashtag about 13 times. Now, of course, that is not what is happening. Not everybody is watching TikTok made me buy it videos. And more importantly, not every single TikTok user is shopping on TikTok. So that, of course, leads us to the question of who is shopping on TikTok and how are they shopping on the platform? Let's start off with the second part of that question and talk a little bit about how shopping on TikTok primarily works today. We already know that TikTok is a major driver of purchase intent. Its strength in discovery is powered by its algorithm, which surfaces relevant and entertaining content tailored to each user through the main personalized for you feed that users see as soon as they open the app. Now, a lot of times those videos also contain products that are presented in an entertaining way so that people are inspired to try them out and eventually buy them. Um, so it's really no surprise that you can see here in this Bizarre Voice survey that almost three quarters of worldwide TikTok shoppers said they shopped on the platform when they stumbled across something in their feed. Now, it was far less common for, for them to say that they actively look for products to shop for on TikTok. And that's something to keep in mind as we continue through this presentation. So this survey by Work and TikTok for Business and Publicist Group revealed a somewhat similar result. It showed that videos on the For You feed, as well as trending videos in general, were really leading channels um, where TikTok shoppers discovered new brands or new products across many industries, including food and drink, luxury products, and automotive. But what's really interesting to me about this chart is that it also shows that the origin of these videos that inspired them to learn more about a product wasn't as important. You can see that videos from brands, videos from creators, and even paid ads really were channels that led them to discover more. And again, that's something to keep in mind as we continue. So unlike shopping on many other social platforms, a lot of TikTok inspired purchases actually take place off platform, whether that's in stores at a later date, whether that's on an e-commerce platform like Amazon, and sometimes it even happens on rival social networks um, like Instagram or Facebook. And we think that in some cases, TikTok might actually facilitate this kind of behavior. It lets brands link directly to their Instagram account, 
or to an e-commerce platform um, through an embedded link in their profile on TikTok. Now, here you can see some data from Inmar Intelligence, which shows that about 25% of all US adults had been inspired to make a purchase off of content that they'd seen on TikTok, but just 15% actually completed that purchase directly on the platform. If you're also looking at this data and thinking, well, both of those figures are significantly smaller than Facebook and Instagram, you're right. Um, this survey was based on all US adults. And I, even though TikTok has seen massive growth in its user base over the past couple of years, we know that it's still smaller than Facebook and Instagram. Plus, a lot of those users are younger, so they're probably not captured in this research. In fact, of the nearly 91 million uh, people that in the US that we expect will use TikTok this year, close to half of them are Gen Z and another third are millennials. Now, those are the generations that are most likely to keep up with current trends and be influenced to buy based on them. But especially in the case of teens, um, they may have less purchasing power or even lack access to payment methods. But those same teens can easily share TikTok content with older family members like myself who can go out and complete the purchase for them. So that explains the high levels of off-platform buying as well. So now if you're sitting there thinking that TikTok's shopper base is perhaps too small or even too young, I'm here to tell you that smaller and younger can still be mighty. It's true that TikTok may not have the largest shopper base out there, but its shoppers are incredibly engaged. In that same Bizarre Voice survey, about a fifth of TikTok shoppers worldwide said they bought products on TikTok all the time, and that was higher than for any other social platform measured. And close to half said they bought products on TikTok sometimes. Now, that's of course partly because TikTok users are highly engaged in general on the platform. Time spent on TikTok is now closer to time spent on YouTube than it is to so-called traditional social networks, according to our latest forecast. Um, and I'm uh, I have to tell you also that our forecast is based on adults. Um, and if we were to include teens, I can guarantee you that that figure would be much, much higher. If any of you have spent any time on TikTok recently, you know that that endless stream of videos that are tailored to your interests just really keeps you scrolling for a lot longer than you originally intended. And every second that those users spend on that platform really presents an opportunity for brands to reach them. And Jasmine, by the way, uh, if I can just say, I love the, how you organize this, just because a lot of the questions that we received ahead of time asked about how big is the opportunity, you know, uh, the social commerce, e-commerce opportunity on TikTok in general, what does uh, the platform's growth trajectory look like? Will TikTok catch up to Facebook and Instagram in 2022 on the social commerce front? So no, I think that this is like a perfect transition. Yeah, and those are excellent questions. And there's really two main parts to the TikTok opportunity that I wanna to discuss today. Now, the first is that TikTok has really opened the door to social commerce for brands that may not have been suited to the tactic on other social platforms, including Instagram that prioritize highly curated or, or polished content. And what I'm talking about here really are everyday brands that you know, sell goods from carpet cleaners to maybe disinfecting wipes. Um, and here's a quote from Scott Matthews, who is the director of product management at Y Media Labs, who said it better than I ever could have in a recent interview I had with him. He said, you're not going to put a Valencia filter on a bowl of Cheerios and be like, look at my bowl of Cheerios in Rome, but there are a million ways that you can incorporate Cheerios into a funny TikTok video. And, for what it's worth, videos containing hashtag Cheerios have over 120 million views on TikTok today. Meanwhile, there's about 350,000 posts and videos tagged with Cheerios on Instagram. At the same time, however, it is also clear that TikTok simply isn't going to catch up to Facebook or Instagram in terms of total buyers or sales this year. We are expecting U.S. social shoppers to spend about $46 billion on social commerce purchases in 2022, and most of those dollars will continue to come from Facebook and from Instagram. Keep in mind, though, that our, <clears throat> excuse me, that our forecast is based solely on purchases that are made directly on a social platform 
or by clicking through a link to a retailer site to complete a purchase. So it doesn't capture that in-store or other off-platform spending that we already said is so common with hashtag TikTok made me buy it purchases. So with all of this in mind, the opportunity for brands in 2022 is really twofold. It's about incremental revenue growth from existing shoppers and also converting non-buyer TikTok users into customers. And brands that can harness the power of viral commerce are those that will be able to find success in on TikTok this year. And what I mean by viral commerce is the practice of creating content that showcases products in an entertaining and a visually appealing way so that it's shared widely across social media. And now, as TikTok continues to add new commerce capabilities, it's also adding an increased opportunity for brands to drive more in-app buying. So over the past 18 months or so, TikTok has significantly expanded its e-commerce portfolio, and it is becoming increasingly clear that commerce will be the cornerstone of its monetization efforts. Of course, it is following the lead of China, which is the home country to its parent company, ByteDance, and where social video shopping is already huge business. It's also already got a roadmap in Daoin, its Chinese counterpart, but what's also becoming clear is that commerce on TikTok is shaping up to be much more similar to commerce on other US-based social platforms than on Chinese ones. So last September, uh, TikTok fully rolled out a suite of commerce solutions uh, to, called TikTok Shopping. It is available to Shopify, Square, and several other types of merchants in the US that have a TikTok for business account. And it allows them to do things like set up in-app storefronts or add tabs to their profiles where they can add their product catalogs and include an in-app checkout option for users. It's very similar to the way that Facebook shops and Instagram shops works. So part of TikTok shopping also includes product links or the ability to tag products that are in organic or in paid videos that then direct users directly to one of these online storefronts to complete a purchase. I think of these also as being similar to product tags on Instagram or even affiliate marketing links. Now, TikTok also allows brands to add those product catalogs to different types of ad formats, including collection ads and dynamic showcase ads, which you can see here. And you can also integrate product catalogs into live shopping through dynamic links. Um, of course, more in-app shopping means really two things for brands. One, it, they help TikTok better attribute video views to sales, which in turn helps to measure the effectiveness of TikTok campaigns. And of course, TikTok can then feed that data back into its algorithm to continue recommending relevant and entertaining shoppable content. The second thing um, that why, the second reason why in-app shopping matters, of course, is that it creates a shorter and a simpler path to purchase. So many TikTok purchases and social media purchases in general are impulse buys. So the more seamless the journey is from discovery to checkout, the more likely it is that a user will convert. And for those users that might not be ready to convert immediately, something like an online storefront gives those, gives those buyers a touch point to return to that is directly on TikTok versus another platform or in-store when they're ready to hit buy. So on the right here, I wanted to give you an example of how um, TikTok shopping works. This is from Kylie Cosmetics, which has enabled TikTok shopping. Um, you can see it starts off at the brand profile and as the video plays, um, you'll see it, uh, it click through, through the shop tab, go to the product catalog, choose a product and go all the way to checkout um, all natively within the TikTok app. I know that we got a lot of questions 
uh, we can't, you can't give a broad recommendation that will fit all brands, but how would brands approach TikTok shopping features from a test and learn perspective and all these different things? It seems that there's so much for people to wrap their you know, uh, heads around that uh, they have to you know, just wade into the waters and try a few things to see what works for their own brand. That is an excellent question. And I will be going through best practices and giving a lot more examples toward the end of the presentation that any of the, the viewers can actually implement today. So um, just stay tuned for that one. And now we're actually getting to the part that you've all been waiting for. And that is about how to craft a TikTok commerce strategy. This is also where those two things that I had asked you to keep in mind at the top of the presentation one being the spontaneous nature of TikTok shopping today and the importance of content over accounts really start to come into play. So in short, success on TikTok today requires brands to take a content first, commerce second approach. In practice, that means a focus on creating entertaining and relevant content that features products in a way that generates interest in them and re regardless of where that final transaction takes place. Or in the words of Ivan Perez Armendares, who is the executive vice president and head of digital experience at Deutsche Le, don't try to make commerce viral, operate within the native constructs of the platform and apply shopping opportunities on top of that. Now, of course, the native constructs on TikTok are, are quite different from those that we may be used to on social platforms that we're more familiar with. So this might also require a shift in thinking for many brands. To make that shift a little bit easier for you, I would like to share what I call the three C's of a content first approach. Now, the first C is for communities, which really means that brands should start by finding their niche on TikTok and then finding their niche within that. The second C is for creators. Creators are what make TikTok tick and they play a vital role in the path to purchase. And the third C is connection. Yes, TikTok users want to be entertained, but they're also drawn to brands and regular users um, who are authentic and transparent and who can build a one-to-one -one connection. So starting with the first C, TikTok is full of communities or smaller subgroups of like-minded people who share a common interest. Those communities really are a brand's first stop in understanding what kind of content resonates with their potential audiences. Now, like most everything on TikTok, communities are organized by hashtags like hashtag hair talk or hashtag plant talk or hashtag book talk, Jeremy, which you had brought up earlier. Um, and Book Talk for me is also a fantastic example, not only because it has been credited with reviving the print publishing industry, but also, as you can see here, there are so many different types of people that participate in this community. Um, there's actor Will Smith there alongside regular users, um, as well as TikTokers or influencers or creators on TikTok. Now that leads us nicely into our second C, creators. Um, creators really are the core of the TikTok shopping experience. We know that TikTok users are already consuming a lot of creator content, especially among the younger set. You can see that here in the civic science chart that I have up. But TikTok creators aren't necessarily the types of creators that we're used to on say Instagram or on YouTube. In fact, a lot of them are so-called everyday influencers, including those that have risen to real fame through uh, one entertaining and well-timed video. Now that's again, thanks to TikTok's algorithm, which will pick up entertaining content um, regardless of a user's follower account. But that also means that TikTok has essentially become this breeding ground for micro, nano, and niche influencers who are among the best commerce partners that brands can have. Their followers tend to view them as people like them, and that relatability is what makes them more likely to trust and then take action based on their product and brand recommendations. Jasmine, actually, just one quick follow-up there. I, sure. I, I think it's interesting because we got a lot of questions about the creator uh, piece specifically. 
um, like how does a brand find the most brand appropriate creators? And I think the answer is obviously cast a wider net to some extent, but it's interesting. A lot of people also had some questions about brand safety and how do you find somebody who's aligned with your values, but also is going to be uh, somebody who feels authentic. Yeah, well, I love, first of all, that there's a lot of questions about creators because that means our audience is already connecting the dots between creators and commerce on TikTok. So you're already one step ahead of the game. But in terms of finding creators, there are a lot of different options out there. TikTok has its uh, TikTok creator marketplace where brands can be matched with creators that have uh, similar brand ethos or are in line with their values. There's also the TikTok creative exchange. And of course, there are agencies as well that brands can turn to to help um, find those creators. Brand safety is always a concern, not just on TikTok, but really the idea is to vet these creators really well and make sure that you are in line with, um, you know, with, with your values um, on both ends. So I did want to share one really great and really recent example of um, creator videos really driving sales from TikTok. Um, it is from Mac Cosmetics. It is called um, Mac Stack Mascara. And according to an article on glossy.com, the hashtag Mac Stack Mascara now has over 73 million views on TikTok, which is huge considering that the product only launched on March 1st. The mascara also sold out within the first week on Ulta.com, which is, of course, a big beauty e-commerce site. And Mac has credited creator videos on TikTok, like the one I'm about to play, for really driving those massive sales. It's like you can just keep putting it on. I can't wait to post this. I'm going to post this now. I have seen a million mascaras and never one that looks that good on everybody. I am genuinely just shocked at how incredible this looks. I cannot wait to try it. This is the new Mac Stack Mascara. It's supposed to be buildable as f Like you're supposed to be able to do layer after layer after layer and no clumpiness. And as Miss No Lashes here, I feel like I'm a good person to test it. So let's give him a curl. Okay, you can see the difference with the curler. Here's the wand. It looks very nice. I'm excited. Okay, I'm going to go in for layer one. Barely putting it on, and it already looks really good. Oh my god, okay. Okay, there's layer one. It looks so good. <laughs> I'm like so excited. Okay, this is one coat. I'm gonna let it dry, and then we'll add the second. Coat two. Micro brush on the bottom. Oh my god. <laughs> um, I freaking love this mascara. Oh my god. I uh, video in a moment, but I also wanted to talk first about how creators also help brands out with that third C, which is building a connection. Um, they really are able to present products in a native and authentic way, um, and authenticity and transparency really are the key to forming a connection. As you saw in that video just a moment ago, it was raw, it was real, it was authentic, it was very much the personality of the creator. And that is why it worked so well um, in driving sales from TikTok. And of course, here's just another chart to show how important brand authenticity and transparency are among TikTok's core Gen Z audience. You can see here that they are values that are um, more important to those Gen Z users than the total population in the U.S. at large. And I know, by the way, you can't get to everything here, but uh, just a, a quick shameless plug. You discussed a lot of this, uh, more about this topic in your recent U.S. Video Influencer Marketing 2022 report, which I encourage all subscribers to read if they can. So uh, shameless plug done. I appreciate the shameless plug. And yes, you're absolutely right. It also compares videos on TikTok to videos on YouTube and Instagram and, and really gives best practices on how to use all three. But speaking of best practices, um, I wanted to give you just a few for starting out on TikTok. So the first and probably one of the most important is to not be overly promotional. Most of the best performing videos on TikTok contain content that is either adjacent or sometimes not even related to the product, but feature that product again in a native and non-promotional way. The second is don't be afraid to poke fun, lighthearted, irreverent, tongue in cheek, and sometimes even self-deprecating humor really resonates well with a lot of TikTok users. Incorporate sound. It is true that TikTok has, is moving away from its roots in lip syncing and dancing, 
but sound is still a really major part of a lot of uh, popular TikTok videos. They include audio clips from popular songs. They also include trending sounds or even original audio. Give creators creative freedom. They know best how to promote products in a way that will appeal to their followers. Entertaining can also be educational. Videos that contain life hacks or tips and tricks are some of the most viewed content on TikTok today. And brands that can find a way to showcase the features of a specific product can really lean into this format. And also one of the most important ones, choose your product wisely. Virality is so difficult and probably almost impossible to predict on TikTok, but exclusive or limited edition products, at least so far, have proven to be best suited um, for this kind of content. And now for the fun part, um, how to layer shopping opportunities onto content. I am gonna give you four ways that you can do this today, starting with the simplest to the most uh, technically challenging. So the first is through hashtags. We already saw an example of this with the MAC uh, Cosmetics case study that I shared. Um, you can use hashtags to help surface branded content to users outside of their original audience, if it's for a creator or your own um, for a brand, um, and they'll show up through the For You page or the hashtag search function. Hashtags also encourage TikTok's algorithm to continue surfacing that content for a long period of time and even after a specific campaign period has ended. You can also lean into hashtag challenges. To be fair, these are less popular now on TikTok than they were a couple of years ago, and, and TikTok isn't promoting them as much as they were before, but they still are a really great way for brands to get in front of a wide audience. They entertain audiences. They also encourage audience participation by asking them to um, create their own videos. And that expands the total reachable audience for that content and the products that are featured in it. Product links, cannot stress enough how important these are for in-app shopping. They provide brands with the ability to pay for a call to action directly within these videos. Um, and then it gives customers a more direct path to purchase all natively within the TikTok app. And finally, online storefronts. Even if users aren't technically shopping actively for products on TikTok and navigating directly to these mini storefronts, they're still a great place um, for brands to showcase their product catalog to potential buyers. And also as in-app shopping in general continues to grow on social media, brands that set up an online storefront on TikTok today will be ahead of the game. So before I get into the key takeaways, I did wanna give you two examples. Um, uh, I will play the videos first. The first one is from Clorox um, and the Clorox Miss Challenge. And then we'll talk a little bit about why these work. What? Hey! Yes, go ahead. Love it. So here is why I like this one. First, it was non-promotional. The challenge that Clorox presented was for users to create a video of them undergoing a transformation or a glow up in TikTok speak, um, like the original video did in cleaning with Clorox disinfecting mist. But the user generated videos didn't need to be about cleaning. They did not need to show Clorox products. It just had to show a before and after transformation. The video also featured a creator. Um, it stars Ian Paget, who is a well-known TikTok creator, and that gave Clorox an authentic in to a wide audience. It also tapped a familiar audio trend. That song that you heard playing in the black in the background is the assignment by Tay Money, which is a nod to I understood the assignment trend on TikTok, which really refers to someone who goes above and beyond at a specific task. It also asked for a duet. A duet allows users to build onto an existing video with their own video, and then that shows in a split screen effect, as you saw. And that ensures that viewers of the UGC content 
will still see the original video with the creator and with the Clorox mist. And finally, and most importantly, it was shoppable. You can navigate through this hashtag to a landing page that has a shop now button that will take clickers or viewers directly to Target's in-app website to complete the transaction. Now, the second example I have is from Magnolia Boutique, um, which uses TikTok Shopping's product links and online storefront. Um, I'll play the video again, and then we'll talk a little bit about why it works. If you don't spend your money, then who will? <laughs> So here is why I liked this example. Again, it was non-promotional. It clearly showed off the dresses that were for sale, but it wasn't done in a flashy or showcasey way. The star of the video wasn't a huge TikTok famous creator like Ian Paget was. And I think that that shows that you don't need to have a creator with 2.5 million followers to be able to create entertaining content. Again, it used a familiar and funny audio trend. I laugh every time I see this video because it reminds me of the original one where it came from. And finally, it used product tags that directed viewers directly to the Magnolia Boutique's own online storefront on TikTok to complete a purchase. So before we head to the Q&A, I know we have a ton of questions, uh, Jeremy. I just wanted to give three key takeaways. The first, um, is that commerce is the cornerstone of TikTok's monetization efforts. It is already a major discovery vehicle and the platform's new in-app shopping capabilities are really designed to drive more lower funnel behaviors directly on the platform. I've said it before, I'll say it again, creators are the core of the TikTok shopping experience. Virality is almost impossible to predict, but creators really know best when it comes to making content that resonates with users and incorporates products in that native way. Finally, most importantly, take a content first, commerce second approach to TikTok commerce. The key is to create videos that entertain or educate or both in order to generate interest in a product um, that sends users to a point of sale, regardless of whether that is on or off the platform. Over to you, Jeremy. Okay. That was great. Um, and you answered so many questions that I'm surprised we still have as many as we do, but we're getting great <laughs> questions. We received actually more than 200 from our audience ahead of time, by the way. Uh, so uh, folks, if you've sent in a question and we don't answer it right now, uh, don't fret. We'll be sending out written answers to the top questions we received after the event. Um, but let's uh, take some questions from the audience. I actually wanted to start you off, Jasmine, by asking about live stream shopping. You know, that seems to be a very big topic. How will live stream shopping change the social landscape, particularly on TikTok in uh, 2022? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. I think live stream shopping really has the potential to change not only social commerce, but e-commerce in general. We're seeing sort of traditional e-commerce retailers like Amazon lean into the format as well. I think part of the interest in live streaming was really born out of the recent circumstances surrounding the pandemic with people at home and more time on their hands. So there's still a question of whether this is going to be a long lasting trend. TikTok certainly wants to make it happen. It is really pushing live streaming. And I think if we've learned anything over the past couple of years that if, if a platform can do it, it's probably TikTok. It also has the right audience for that. Um, there are younger users, Gen Z primarily, who are really looking for that one-to-one -one connection um, that TikTok and live streaming can provide. Plus, it includes creators, and they are, again, such an important part of um, shoppable live streaming. And obviously, competitors are thinking a lot about how they can get a leg up on TikTok, given you know, all the momentum that the platform has. What do you make of Instagram's move to expand product tags to all users in the US? 
Well, first, I will say that we actually predicted that something like this would happen in our 2022 social media trends report. We thought oh, that Instagram right. and yeah, and Instagram and other social platforms would start to expand their creator tools to users with smaller followings. I think it's smart. One thing we didn't really get a big chance to talk about throughout this presentation was the importance of user-generated content. And we did touch on it, but maybe it wasn't explicitly mentioned. And you know, having these product tags available to all users really just expands the ability to have shoppable content on, on Instagram. I am curious to see, you know, how that develops, how many users are actually tagging products that they have in their posts and videos. Um, but I, I think it's a smart move um, in general for Instagram. How about, how does the relatability of influencers differ on TikTok versus Instagram, since both share similar community models of engagement right now? Yeah, I, there are some definitely some similarities. There are also some differences. I, I think generally when we think about Instagram creators and influencers, you tend to think of more highly polished content. With the introduction of reels, um, that's starting to change. Those are more, you know, fun, light, lighthearted, TikTok style videos that those creators are posting. Um, so yeah, I mean, there are there is some similarities, but in general, what I would say is that TikTok is probably less polished, more raw, more real, while Instagram is probably a little bit more curated. We had one question that I thought was really interesting, and I'll build on it. You know, somebody asked if TikTok can be used uh, to sell B2B at all, if anybody's tried that. And it got me thinking, just to broaden it out, about are there particular industries that just haven't found success yet with TikTok, but uh, might be ones to watch? Yeah, I mean, I, TikTok has definitely carved a niche for a lot of industries that we don't traditionally associate with social commerce. I think a lot of this, you know, is still growing and still developing. One really good example is um, grocery, which is a big social commerce category already in China. And it's starting to grow here. There was actually a um, recent development with Instacart um, allowing uh, uh, TikTok users and creators to incorporate uh, recipes and shopping lists into their videos that were then shoppable. So yeah, I mean, I think it's it's still very much in the beginning, but there is certainly a place for many different industries to at least experiment um, with selling on TikTok. Yeah, no, it, it is very interesting because obviously a lot of people really are in that test and learn uh, phase um, that you were talking about before. How about, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about Instagram. Uh, let's talk about YouTube for a second. What are some of the main differences between TikTok, uh, TikTok's shopping capabilities versus YouTube's? Because obviously people are spending quite a lot of time on YouTube and that's a competitor that I imagine a lot of people are paying attention to. Yeah, so TikTok is really just encroaching on YouTube's territory in, in so many different ways, not in the least when it expanded its maximum video length recently to about 10 minutes. What I will say is that um, YouTube is still a highly relevant venue, especially for influencer marketing. Um, it's also really expanding its shopping capabilities, um, even as TikTok is growing. So, you know, there is certainly more competition between the two of these platforms, but don't count YouTube out yet. I think it has a very important place still within the social commerce and the influencer marketing landscape in general. We actually got another question about uh, Instagram. Um, how does mm -hmm. TikTok's shopping tab compare to Instagram's uh, shop feature? And you know, building on that, also, you know, just which, which one is a little bit more robust from a suite perspective? Which one do you think is going to uh, take it to the next level uh, over the next few months? So I'm not going to comment on the the actual technical capabilities of either of the shopping tags. I'd say they're they're pretty similar. The idea there is the same as to direct users um, straight from a post or a video to to complete a purchase. I think you know with a lot of a lot of when we're talking about social commerce, it isn't really necessarily about choosing one platform or one tactic over another, but really you know trying, testing, learning, experimenting, and also you know not putting all of your eggs into one basket. Just because you're trying out social commerce on TikTok doesn't mean you shouldn't be doing the same on Instagram or even YouTube or Facebook. There is a place for all of them um, within the social commerce ecosystem. 
So I know that this is kind of getting a little bit closer towards TikTok advertising, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as a as an idea. But uh, which, by the way, would be like another great thing for us to cover in the near future. Um, <laughs> how can uh, retailers who sell apparel in store, but they don't really have an e-com, an owned e-com strategy or business, how can they leverage some of uh, these things that you just presented and relay that into a TikTok strategy? And I think almost, you know, drive, you know, presumably traffic to try that thing on, you know, convert uh, people into in-store purchases. So yeah, that is definitely more of an advertising side question. Um, but luckily, my next report actually is going to be on TikTok advertising. So that is something that I will be looking into and addressing um, in that report. Uh, how about how can brands be sure that their brand content or ads are exposed essentially to the right audiences? And I think you know, some of the answers that for this, I'll just kind of jump in is that's very difficult uh, on TikTok. I mean, targeting is not necessarily the way that you get ahead and TikTok's algorithm has done a really great job at showing the right things, quote unquote, to the right people. But um, what would you say to that? Yeah, targeting, targeting is difficult. And I would also say that targeting is getting more difficult across social media in general with a lot of the different rules and regulations that are being rolled out recently. Um, you know, I think going back to what this presentation was all about is, you know, starting with this, this content first approach and thinking what kind of content might resonate with those communities or users that, you know, could be your potential audience as a place to start and then really testing and iterating on whatever successes that that you might see from from TikTok. Uh, so how about building on that, you know, what are the target audiences that are responding better to target uh, to TikTok shopping? I think you covered this a little bit, right? Uh, just obviously younger users are a little bit more uh, adept at using the platform, but anything else that you've noticed from a demographic standpoint? So there's very little data specifically addressing who is shopping on TikTok right now in terms of demographics. It is still incredibly new. It's still developing um, just based on, on TikTok's own audience. You know, I would say that it is primarily younger users, Gen Z and millennials. But um, my colleague or our colleague, uh, Debbie Williamson, is actually writing a report, um, her next report, which is on social social usage in the US and it will touch on how older generations um, are also using TikTok as well. So that may help to, to answer that question a little bit better in the future. I think there are a lot of brands that are concerned about what's the right way to create video and sustain this type of video content creation. We had a good question about that. Does that mean that, you know, from your perspective, you know, do brands have to rely on creators as their best bet to get their name out there and to facilitate TikTok commerce? Or uh, are you seeing more brands that are really trying to create their own video, uh, build a relationship with an agency, uh, you know, develop an in-house studio, anything like that? Well, the reality on TikTok right now is that creator accounts tend to have more followers than brand accounts. They tend to be much more popular um, or creators tend to be much more popular there than, than a lot of companies. But I, I do think that brands should also be leaning into their own creative on TikTok. You know, it doesn't necessarily, when we're talking about creators, yes, you can, you can partner with these um, everyday influencers or larger creators on, on TikTok, but I, there's actually been quite a few successful examples of particularly smaller brands who are tapping employees as sort of brand advocates and tapping into fun trends that they can do in the office and, and really just showcasing their um, company and their brand in a different light. So I think it's a combination. Definitely work with creators, learn from creators, include their content in your content, but you can also definitely create um, brand videos as well. And I think another thing that's interesting, and we got a good question about this is, does the TikTok model of driving shopping opportunities rely solely on user and creator advocacy? And you know, just building on that, I think that there are some brands that have done quite well on TikTok by building the right relationships with creators, even though they're not the kinds of things that you think would necessarily go quote unquote viral, you know, from a shopping perspective. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, one thing to keep in mind is that right now, a lot of TikTok shopping or most TikTok shopping really depends on this virality and, and the content. But as TikTok is building out its commerce capabilities, and it's clear that it's really focused on making commerce on the platform work, there is a real chance that shopping on TikTok may start to evolve. And it may be, you know, more about users navigating directly to a brand or directly to a shop. And that's why I was saying earlier that it's so important to have this technology technology set up on the back end so you're able to capture um, that consumer activity if and when it starts to take place. We also got a question, this builds on something that you just said previously about the fact that I've noticed this too, that brand accounts just don't really have the same following. And I mean, it kind of makes sense, you know, you want to build a direct relationship with a human being. But um, how can brands, that being said, leverage their own accounts, uh, either as opposed to par uh, partnering with creators? or to figure out how to almost glom onto a creator's uh, you know, following in order to increase their own. Yeah, so I mean, I think there were some examples in this presentation, particularly the Kylie Cosmetics one, you could see that there were plenty of creators featured on her profile, which means that they're repurposing, amplifying a lot of this creator content that is being created about the brand. And I think that's a really good way for brands to start to increase um, you know, their, their potential audience and potential uh, uh, follower count. So I think we have to wrap and I'm going to ask, uh, you know, maybe one more question. Uh, I've got time for one more. And just to kind of almost uh, sum up a few that we haven't gotten a chance to ask, you know, what, what should people be looking for from TikTok commerce uh, in 2022 and beyond? What is the thing that you are paying the most attention to right now? So the report that I wrote on this really has three sort of predictions for what might happen. Um, one, I am expecting to see a lot more live shopping opportunities. Um, another thing that could potentially happen is that TikTok um, creates a dedicated shopping tab similar to the shopping tab that uh, exists on Instagram and similar to the For You shop, I think it's called, that Pinterest uh, just released. And the third thing that might happen is that TikTok releases a direct checkout option similar to Instagram checkout where it's not necessarily powered by a third-party e-commerce or it isn't powered by a third-party e-commerce provider, but the checkout is actually powered by TikTok itself. That to be fair, is not as popular in the US as it is in China. But you know, there's a couple of different reasons why we think that it might work better for TikTok. One being the sense of FOMO that TikTok creates that might make users just wanna get straight to purchase um, and in a seamless way as possible. So those are really three things that I will be looking out for in terms of TikTok commerce in 2022. And I'm curious to see if, if any of those things materialize. Yeah, no, I can't wait uh, either. And speaking of FOMO, I haven't checked uh, TikTok for 47 minutes now. So I'm a little wow. scared what, what I've uh, <laughs> missed out on. But unfortunately, that's all the time we have uh, for today. Jasmine, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us. Thank you. This was great. And a huge thank you, by the way, to our production crew behind the scenes for making this webinar possible. You can't imagine how much they do. And then they do a little bit more than that. Uh, we hope you found this presentation useful and uncovered a few nuggets that you can use to drive your business forward. But as we wrap up, let me just take a moment to tell you what's happening at Insider Intelligence. First off, you can register for upcoming live analyst and tech talk webinars at insiderintelligence.com events. On the audio side, don't forget to subscribe to Behind the Numbers, our daily podcast on your podcast app of choice. And finally, if you're not already signed up for one of our free newsletters, you can find those at insiderintelligence.com. Remember to keep an eye out uh, to, in your inbox for the link to today's presentation. And of course, feel free to email us if you have any other questions. And again, thanks for joining us and have a wonderful day.